This is Mr. Rose, and this is the review for the Unit 4 test, uh, which is soon coming up. We want to go over the study sheet, so hopefully you'll fill this out as we uh, go through it. Remember, you want to show your work on the test, so make sure that, uh, that you copy down the work as well. Uh, we've actually only got four types of problems on this test. It's a small chapter, and uh, we've only done a couple things. So let's get right to work on this. This first section is asking us to find the value of x and to round our answer to the nearest tenth. Well, remember on all these problems, we're going to go back to Sokotoa. On problem number 17 here, we have a 40 degree angle. And remember that the side across from that angle is the opposite side. The side beside the angle is the uh, adjacent side. And then the hypotenuse is always the side that does not touch the right angle. So if we want to find out what x is, we're using the hypotenuse. And we know the adjacent side and adjacent hypotenuse have to do with cosine. So we're going to use the cosine here. So cosine of 40 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is 5, over the hypotenuse, which is x. Now remember, this is one of those situations where you have to flip-flop to get the x by itself. So we're going to put the x over here and the cosine of 40 degrees over here on the bottom. And when you use your calculator to work that out and round it off to one place after the decimal, x comes out to be 6.5. Don't forget that your calculator needs to be set on uh, degree mode. So if you did not get 6.5 when you worked that out, uh, make sure that you uh, change it to degree mode. If you don't know how to do that, let me know, and I'll be more than happy uh, to instruct you on that. All right, on number 18, again, we want to find out what X is. They gave me a 25-degree angle, and in regards to that 25-degree angle, this side marked X is my opposite side. The leg that's beside of the angle is the adjacent side. And this side over here is always the hypotenuse because it does not touch the right angle. So in terms of the side that I want, the opposite side, and the side that I know, the adjacent side, opposite and adjacent has to go back to uh, tangent. So let's use the tangent function. Tangent of 25 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, and all that I have to do here to get the x by itself is multiply both sides by 9, and when I work that out on the calculator, 9 times the tangent of 25 degrees comes out to be 4.2. All right, we have another problem here, number 19. Again, they want us to find out what x is. Uh, the angle they gave me was this angle at 65 degrees. This is the opposite side, this leg is the adjacent side, and this 12 here represents the hypotenuse. So in regards to that 65 degree angle, I want to know the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse Adjacent hypotenuse have to do with cosine, so I'm going to use the cosine function here. So the cosine of 65 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 12. And just like on that last one, all I have to do to get the x by itself is multiply both sides by 12. And 12 times the cosine of 65 degrees comes out to be 5.1 when you round it off. 
on number 20. Here's my missing sign. And I know this side over here, this is the opposite side in regards to this 32 degree angle. This is the hypotenuse because it does not touch the right angle. And this is the adjacent side, which we know nothing about. <clears throat> so I want to know the hypotenuse and I know the opposite. Opposite hypotenuse have to do with sine. So I'm going to use the sine of 32 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is another problem where we have to do the flip-flop uh, procedure. So x is equal to 15 over the sine of 32 degrees. And when I work that out on my calculator, x comes out to be 28.3. If you have any questions about these problems, please be sure to ask me about them before the test. Uh, just email me or contact me in some way and I'll be more than happy to go over the problem with you. <clears throat> All right, um, we've got Sokotoa again. We're trying to find X. We know a 55 degree angle this is the opposite leg, this is the adjacent leg, and this is the hypotenuse. <coughs> Excuse me. We know the opposite side, and we're trying to find the adjacent side. Opposite and adjacent have to do with tangent. So I'm going to use the tangent function here. So tangent of 55 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 20, over the adjacent, which is x. I'm going to do the flip-flop procedure here. That's going to give me x equals 20 over the tangent of 55 degrees. And when you work that out on your calculator, that comes out to be 14.0. And here on number 22, we're trying to find X again. In regards to this 31 degree angle here, X is the opposite leg. The adjacent leg is over here. And 18 is our hypotenuse. So I want to know the opposite side. I already know the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse go back to sine. So I'm going to use the sine here. Sine of 31 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So all I have to do here is multiply both sides by 18. And 18 times the sine of 31 degrees gives me 9.3. And that's how you do the first section of problems on the test for uh, tomorrow. All right, this is another type of problem where we have to use the inverse trig functions to find the angle. It says use a calculator to approximate the measure of angle A to the nearest tenth of a degree. So we're always concerned about angle A. Now in regards to angle A here, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Always go back to Sokotoa. All right, we know the opposite and the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to do the tangent of angle A is equal to the opposite side, which is 37, over the adjacent side, which is 29. Remember, to get the A by itself, you do the inverse tangent of 37 over 29. Probably have to put that in parentheses on your calculator. So when you work that out with your calculator and round it off to one place after the decimal, you get 51.9 degrees. On number two, angle A is what we're looking for. 
This is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the opposite side. We know the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, so that means that we're going to be using cosine here. So the cosine of angle A is equal to the adjacent side, which is 6, over the hypotenuse, which is 23. We want to use the inverse cosine to get the answer. And when I, find, when I find the inverse cosine of 6 over 23 on my calculator, I get 74.9 degrees. On number 3 over here, here's angle A. And in, in regards to angle A, here is my opposite leg, here is my adjacent leg, and here is the hypotenuse. So we know the opposite and the hypotenuse. That is my sine function. So the sine of angle A is equal to the opposite, which is 12, over the hypotenuse, which is 60. So we have to use the inverse sine of 12 over 60. And when I work that out on my calculator, I get 11.5 degrees. All right, this is uh, one of the problems that we did in that last lesson on solving the right triangle. Remember what you want to do is write down the six pieces of the triangle and solve for the missing pieces. Okay, so on this triangle here, on number, number 23, we've got the measure of angle A, the measure of angle B, and the measure of angle C. We have side AB, we have side BC, and we have side CA. Make sure you show your work on these problems on the test. All right, let's write in what we know. We know angle B is a 90 degree angle. And we know that side AB is 6. And we know side BC is 8. We need to find the missing parts. All right, I see that I've got uh, two of the three sides of a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem for that. We're missing side CA, which is the hypotenuse. So let's do AB squared, which is 6 squared, plus BC squared, which is 8 squared, equals CA squared. That's my hypotenuse. All right, 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. Add those together and get 100 equals CA squared. Now you want to take the square root of both sides, and CA comes out to be 10. Now as far as the missing angles are concerned, uh, we want to use inverse trig functions just like we did on those last few problems. To find the missing angle. Let's work with angle A here. In regards to angle A, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. So I know the opposite side and the adjacent side. So that's going to give me The tangent function. So the tangent of angle A is equal to the opposite, which is 8, over the adjacent, which is 6. So take the inverse of the tangent and A comes out to be 53.1 degrees. Now in terms of the other angle here, uh, we want angle C. Angle C, uh, we know the opposite side, and we know 
the adjacent side. Remember those two switch places because we switched angles. So we're going to use tangent again. So the tangent of angle C is equal to the opposite side, which is 6, over the adjacent side, which is 8. So we want to find the inverse tangent of 6 over 8. So C comes out to be 36.9 degrees. If you want to check that real quick, you can add up the three angles and make sure that you get 180 degrees. <clears throat> All right, on problem number 24, <clears throat> excuse me, we have three angles, E, F, and G. So the measure of angle E, the measure of angle F, and the measure of angle G. <clears throat> we have side E, F, we have side F, G, and we have side G, E. We know that the measure of angle E is 61.4 degrees. We know that the measure of angle F is 90 degrees. We know that side uh, FG is 14.5. Now I notice that I know one of the two acute angles, so all I really have to do to get that other missing acute angle is subtract from 90. So the measure of angle G is 90 minus 61.4 and when I subtract that out I get 28.6 degrees now we're going to have to use trig functions to find sides E, F, and G, E uh, in, and remember don't use measurements that you have found in your calculations use the measurements that they give you in the problem uh, so the the angle that I know in the problem is 61.4 degrees and in regards to that angle this is the opposite leg this is the adjacent leg and this is the hypotenuse <clears throat> so if I want to find side EF I know the opposite side, and I'm looking for the adjacent side. That is uh, the tangent function. So the tangent of 61.4 degrees is equal to the opposite, 14.5, over the adjacent, which is EF. This is a case where we have to do the flip-flop. And when we do that, we get EF is equal to 14.5 over the tangent of 61.4 degrees. Using the calculator to evaluate that, EF comes out to be 7.9. In order to get GE, GE is my hypotenuse. So this time I know the opposite and the hypotenuse is what I'm looking for. So that's going to give me sine. So I'm going to do the sine of 61.4 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 14.5 over the hypotenuse which is side GE. I want to flip-flop again, so that's going to give me GE is equal to 14.5 over the sine of 61.4 degrees. And when I evaluate that on my calculator, GE comes out to be 16.5. Make sure you show your work on these problems. I know that's going to take a while uh, to do that, but you've got plenty of time to get the test finished, and you don't have a lot of problems to work on, so please make sure you do it correctly. 
and get full credit for your problems. All right, we have one last section of problems to uh, look at. And these problems are just simply wanting you to write the sine, cosine, and tangent of both angles A and B. So make sure you do both angles. Okay, so in terms of angle A here, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so the sine of angle A The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A would be 45 over 53. Now you want to reduce these if possible. That won't reduce, so that's your final answer. The cosine of angle A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 28, and the hypotenuse is 53. And once again, that will not reduce. And then the tangent of angle A is the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite side is 45. The adjacent side is 28. And that will not reduce. Now in regards to angle B, don't forget to do angle B. This is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so the sine of angle B is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's going to be 28 over 53. That will not reduce. The cosine of angle B is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Here's the adjacent. That's 45. The hypotenuse, again, is 53. Will not reduce. And then the tangent of angle B is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is 28. The adjacent is 45. Now, if you'll remember, there's a quick way to check yourself on these. Uh, the sine of angle A should be the cosine of angle B. And if you look at those two, you'll see that that's true. The sine of angle B should be the same as the cosine of angle A. And that's true. And then the tangent of A and B should be reciprocals of each other. And that's true. So that's a real quick way to check yourself to make sure that you got the right answers there. All right, let's look at number two. In regards to angle A, this is my opposite side, this is my adjacent side, and this is my hypotenuse. All right, so if I want to find the sine of angle A, I want the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's going to give me 56 over 65. That will not reduce. If I want to find the cosine of angle A, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's 33 over 65. That will not reduce. And the tangent of angle A is equal to the opposite over the uh, adjacent. The opposite is 56. The adjacent is 33. That will not reduce. Now in regards to angle B, angle B has this as its opposite side and this as its adjacent side. And remember the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. When you switch angles, you switch opposite and adjacent sides. All right, so the sine of angle B is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to give me 33 over 65. 
the cosine of angle B is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to give me 56 over 65. And then we've got the tangent of angle B, which is the opposite over the adjacent. And that's going to give me 33 over 56. None of those reduce. The sine of angle A is equal to the cosine of angle B. The sine of angle B is equal to the cosine of angle A. And the tangent of angles A, a and B are reciprocals of each other. On our last problem here, we want to do the same thing. Start with angle A. This is the opposite leg, this is the adjacent leg, and this is always the hypotenuse. All right, so we've got the sine of A, and the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to give me 9 over 15. Now, in this case, that will reduce. That reduces by 3. 3 goes in uh, to 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 15 5 times. So don't forget to reduce. The cosine of A will be the adjacent side, which is 12, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. And once again, that reduces by 3. 3 goes into 12 4 times. And 3 goes into 15 5 times, so 4 over 5. The tangent of A is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is 9. The adjacent is 12. And that reduces by 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 12 4 times, so 3 over 4. Now in regards to angle B, this becomes the opposite side, and this becomes the adjacent side, and remember the hypotenuse always stays the hypotenuse. So if I want the sine of angle B, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's going to give me 12 over 15. That reduces by 3 to 4 over 5. The cosine of angle B is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to give me 9 over 15. That reduces by 3 to 3 over 5. And then the tangent of angle B is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that's going to give me 12 over 9. That reduces by 3 to 4 over 3. Checking these real quick, uh, the sine of angle A equals the cosine of angle B. The sine of angle B equals the cosine of angle A. And the tangent of angle A and angle B are reciprocals of each other. That concludes our review for the test. I hope that you will use this study guide to study, to look over these problems, to go over them again. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And let me know before you take the test. I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you.